Do you remember the Dollar Tree placement tote I made a year or two ago? Y'all, that is still one of my favorite crafts and I'm always looking for ways to make totes. And this time, we are going to take this stretch canvas that I also got from the Dollar Tree and we are going to turn it into this beautiful canvas bag and we're going to be using rope from the Dollar Tree to make this. So this is truly a Dollar Tree project. But if you don't have a Dollar Tree in your area, I'm sure you can find some cheapo stretch canvas and some rope to make your version of this awesome bag. So I'm going to give you a closer look at the bag in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at my awesome tote. I absolutely love it. When finished, this tote is approximately 13 and a half by 10 and a half inches high, but the canvas is so large that I'm able to really alter this and make it even wider. And I decided that I didn't need to make it wider because I really wanted it to carry my iPad, which fits in there nicely. And I'm just going to tuck in one of these Dollar Tree folios so that you can see that this thing carries that. It carries it very well. I'm going to open it so that you can see it on the inside. But I absolutely love how this turned out. It's super easy to make. And I know that you're going to enjoy this one just as much as we all enjoy the placemat tote. So here's what I'm going to be using to make this tote. I'm going to be using some of the nautical rope. It's cotton rope. You can get this at the Dollar Tree or wherever you're buying things like this. And then I have this large piece of stretched canvas. I think the canvas measures 20 by 16. And it does have a nice canvas feel to it. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove all the staples. So I'm going to show you how I remove the staples. Then I'm going to go ahead and go off camera for a bit so that I can remove all of the staples and I'll be back. So here's what I do. I take anything with the pointed end, I go under the staple and I lift up like that. Then I use my needle nose pliers just to remove the staple. So I'll do one more to show you how easy it is. So you can see that I have my piercer underneath, getting some leverage, and then I can just pull out with my pliers. Now I know that some of you are going to say, you know they make tools for this, right? And you can use an industrial type um, staple remover or some other tool to get the staples out. Well, I don't have those tools, and as you guys know, on the channel, I improvise using what I have. So this is what I have to be able to get them out. This isn't a project that I will be doing over and over and over, so I'm not going to go out and invest in those tools, but it might be something that you want to look into if it's one of those things that you want to do more frequently. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera, remove all of my staples, and then y'all, I'll be right back and we will make our bag. All right, y'all, so I have removed all of the staples from my canvas piece and I am left with this beautiful wooden frame. Save it because we can probably think of a project on which we can use it. So I'm going to be saving this. I don't know if it'll reappear in a project on my channel. If it does, of course, I'll share it with you. So removing the staples is probably the hardest part of this project and it does require you to be able to get in there, dig and pull with your hands. So if you have any hand dexterity issues, that might present a problem for you. So y'all, here we go. We are going to take this and flip it over and spread everything out. like this. So nothing about the project is going to be perfect. In fact, we're not even going to do any measuring. So we're just going to take it and fold it to where the two end points meet. Like this. And I'm making mine more of a flat tote so that it will carry tablets and things like that. Notebooks. So then once I have it folded, I am just going to smooth out increase right here and I'll just go ahead and do that with my big old spatula. Then we're going to take it and you just fold in the side as far as you want it to go. Remember this is no measuring so it really is going to be up to you how far you come in on your sides.
and then I'll do the same thing on this side. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad you came back today. I think today's project is going to be a fun one. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and all of the things that you do. I really do appreciate it. And so now we're going to take this piece and we're just going to fold over. And we're going to do that at the bottom as well. So again, all of this is totally, totally up to you. So now that I have these corner pieces here, this is where I'm going to do my little mitering technique. And I'm going to remove the end pieces, mainly to remove that bulk. So where we have that crisscross, I am just removing the end piece, the corner piece. I keep saying the end piece, I mean the corner piece. And I'll do the same thing down here. So where I folded this across, I want to make sure I go all the way out to the edges so I can get that cross over between here and here same thing here here and here so guys if you choose to make this project please remember that this is a novelty project it is not one that is meant for long-term use I don't know how long the bags will last I am hoping that it will last a while but just make sure that you understand going into this we're not making this tote as a replacement for our favorite bags. We're just making it as a supplement, something that we can carry on occasion. So what I have done is I have run a strip of tape and that's going to fold over like that. So let's peel away. Let's take this piece and let's fold it in. Then I'm going to fold up like this because I want to make sure that my tops are going to be fairly even. And I think that they are going to be even enough. So I'll take some more tape. We'll place that tape right here. And then we'll fold over. Take this, fold over, use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. And so now I can take these two pieces, we're going to fold it, and if I see that one side is longer than the other one, I am just going to join these two together to make sure that they match, and then I can just go over that crease again and sort of change how that might be looking. And so y'all, this part will be very easy. So what I'm going to be doing is folding in like this and then I'm just going to use my glue. Now I was using E6000 on this project. I ran out. So I am going to use my reptile adhesive and I am just going to run some glue And I'm going to trust that my reptile is going to work for me on this project because for those of you who don't know, reptile adhesive was originally designed for bathroom tiles, kitchen tiles, and things like that. So it is a very strong adhesive and I'm placing my glue like that. I'm going to get nasty and messy, but that's okay. So we're going to take this and we're just going to fold up to make sure that we hit the other end. So we're going to fold up like this. I'm just going to make sure that my tops are still matching. 
And then I'm just going to get this nice and stuck by smoothing this out. And y'all, the canvas will absorb the glue. So we're definitely going to have to allow this to dry properly. All right, y'all, so while that is drying, I am going to go ahead and just take some of my rope and we're going to make our handles. So your handle size depends totally on you. So all I did was tie a little knot at both ends. It's a thick rope, so your knot is going to be a little bit thick. So I'm just tying a knot at both ends and then I'm tightening that knot. And y'all, I know that my hands look absolutely yucky from the glue, but that is okay. It's not bothering me one bit. So then basically I'm just going to find where I want to place my handles and I think I'm okay with placing my handles like that. Very simple process. Like I said, I used E6000. This time I'm going to use my Reptile Adhesive. And I use the bottle that I would ordinarily use to refill my small bottles because I wanted a lot of adhesive on here. So I'm just going to take my clip and just clip that into place. We do need to let this dry. Y'all, this is not one of those processes that is going to be immediately ready for use you have to allow it to dry completely, whether you're using reptile adhesive, your favorite glue, or E6000. This glue needs a chance to dry and harden so that your bag will not come undone. So you can see I'm pressing that rope into the glue. Then I'm going to take one of my clips and place that clip so that it will hold that in place. So now I'm just going to take a piece of washi and place it across here so that that doesn't move and across here so that that doesn't move. I want everything to stay in place because now I need to take this and turn it over so that we can do it on this side. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that glue and being very generous with the glue, we're going to put it down like that. And you can see that I used a lot of glue. So now I'm going to take this piece we're going to place it down in that glue. And then we'll take this piece and y'all, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to run a nice bead of glue. And you can see how much glue I actually placed there. And it's very important that you're using a really good quality glue. Don't skimp. I would not use Elmer's glue on this and expect it to hold anything of weight. That's not to say that Elmer's is not a good glue, but for a project like this, you really need to go with the heavy guns, your reptile glue, your E6000 glues like that. So now I'm going to take some more of my washi We're just going to put that there so that we can hold it in place. And put it here so that we can hold it in place. This would be one of those bags that if I needed to wash it, it would be one that I would hand wash. I wouldn't put this bag in a machine. So I need to let this dry. I need to give it a good hour for that glue to harden. And then I will definitely let it dry overnight before I even try putting anything of weight in it. And because I'm making a video, 
then I am not going to have that overnight hardening. So I definitely won't be demonstrating this one with weight in it, but you've seen the other one so you know that it will hold some weight. So let's just put this to the side, let it dry, and I'll be back. All right, y'all, I'm back. And our bag is dry enough for me to handle, but it is not dry enough for me to be able to put any weight in it. But one thing that I noticed when I was putting down the strips like this, I realized that I actually like that look. So I thought, how would it look if I took a strip of washi, you can take ribbon, but if I took a strip of washi and went along the bottom like this, I actually like this. So I think I'm going to give it a try. And what I'll need to do is I'll need to take a little bit of my glue and just run a nice thin strip like this. Take that washi, pull it nice and tight, and place it down like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Y'all, for me, this is a novelty bag, so I don't mind using washi instead of ribbon. You can definitely use ribbon if you want. So we're going to place this piece like that and then I'll just trim away that excess and trim away that excess then I'm going to use my big old spatula to make sure I have that glue spread from end to end and I actually like how that looks now I'm thinking about what if I took a little bit and just placed it right there? Y'all, I like it. I like it, and it comes down to, do you like it? Some of you might be saying, eh, I don't like that. But you know what? I do. So I'm going to take this washi, Put just a little bit right there as close to the rope as I can get it. And then a little bit right there. Because I don't want it sticking out. I just want it to be like a little border at the end of the rope. And I have to be careful with the rope because it's still drying. So I am just going to trim this like that and we'll take it and we'll put it down like that and y'all I need to go wash my hands because they are so sticky then I'm going to do the same thing right here just run a little bit of glue let that glue drop and now I can take my washi and tuck that washi in the glue. And y'all, I was thinking about using my gold letter rub-ons there, but I don't think so. And then the last thing I decided to do on this is I have these little black hearts. And I am just going to take them and I'm going to put them down, one right there. And then I think I'll go up with the other one. I'm going to use my glue I'm going to get these stuck press them down in that glue and y'all I absolutely love how this turned out now I haven't done anything to the other side yet I'll go back and do that off camera because my handles still are not as dry as I would want them to be but we have this beautiful beautiful bag that we made using framed canvas from the Dollar Tree. So, so easy to do. All we need to do really is allow some drying time 
and then you have a fully functional bag. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's super awesome project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.